Science Beetle. Hey, welcome back to Math 101. In this lesson, we're going to focus on trying to figure out the perimeter, area, and circumference of various um, geometric forms. So the geometric forms that we want to look at today are going to be the square, the rectangle, the triangle, and the circle. So let's go ahead and get started. The one thing that I do want to point out at the very beginning um, is in the first two structures here at the very top, the square and just so that we're aware, the square is right here, and the rectangle. The main thing about these two structures is that when we look at a square and compare it to a rectangle, essentially what you've got uh, are two very similar structures. The main difference is that the rectangle is, is a little bit longer than the square, but essentially they all have, they both have four sides that we need to consider. In the square, the sides are all the same, and I'm going to denote that by the little hash marks that you're going to see here. And on the rectangle, you've got two sides that are the same, and I'll denote those by the single marks here, and, but they also have another side that is the same, and so I'll denote those by double hash marks there. But if you look at the, the overall arrangement of this, the square and the rectangle then uh, are going to be two structures in which the perimeter is going to be the sum of each of the sides. So in this particular case, and let's go ahead and redo this, I'm going to erase the figures at the bottom just so we have more space, uh, but let me explain what I mean about that. So if I take the square, I'm going to draw it bigger down here at the bottom. The square essentially is going to have two, four sides that are all the same. Okay, so this would be side one, side two, side three, side four, and the perimeter, and perimeter then, let's just go ahead and define this, the perimeter is going to be the total distance around or outside a particular shape. And so it's the distance around a shape, in this particular case, uh, well, let's just say the the total distance or the distance around a shape. And so to help us in this then, if we take perimeter, which we're going to denote in by P, the perimeter of a square is going to be the sum of all the sides, which is S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus S4. All right. And so if we do the same thing for the rectangle. Let's go ahead and do this here. A rectangle then is going to be like this. And keep in mind that we have two sides that are the same. Here's one side and another side that are the same. And then we've got the top side and the bottom side that are also the same. But we also have here so that we have S1 here, S2. And then the top one is S3 and the one on the left here is S4. We know that S1 and S3 are the same, and we know that S4 and S2 are the same. So when we do this, another way that people usually identify this is that we usually say that this length here, from here all the way across, is going to be the length. Okay? And we usually identify the, the distance uh, moving up and down here as the width. And so since the width has two sides, S2 and S4, we can usually write that in terms of our equation here as 2 times S2 plus, and then since we have S1 and S3 being the same thing, 2 times S1, which is essentially the same thing as saying S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus S4, okay? And so I wanted to make sure that you understood that as we move forward. Essentially, the, the perimeter for both the square and the rectangle is the same. Our next structure is going to be a triangle. Now, the triangle poses a little bit of a different uh, circumstance because we really don't have four sides. What we've got here are three sides. And so we've got an S1 side, an S2 side, and an S3 side. Now, we can assume several things. We can assume that they're all the same. 
And if we do that, we'll mark them all like this, and this would be an isosceles triangle, but let's assume that they're all the same, in which case then the parameter of this particular triangle would be the distance or the, the length of side 1 plus the length of side 2 plus the length of side 3. And even if it were not, even if the sides were not equal, you would still calculate the perimeter using this formula here. Our last figure is going to be the circle. Now, if you look at the circle, what's the one thing that really we can't, uh, we can't measure in terms of a side? Uh, well, I guess I guess I give it away there. The circle is really unique in the sense that it does not have any unique sides, like the triangle, the rectangle, or the square. In fact, so let me just go ahead and draw them here on the side. Here's a, rect a square, here's a rectangle, and here's a triangle. So if you notice the two differences here, there are no sides to a circle. But what we do know, though, is if we go and find the middle point of the circle, and let's just assume arbitrarily it's right there, the big one. Here, let me see if I can erase it. So there we go. The center point of a circle, if you were to measure the distance from the center point all the way to the edge, this area here is called the radius usually denoted as R, and this is usually the radius. And the radius is going to be the distance from the center of a circle to the outer edge of that circle. Okay. Now, if we take the full area, in other words, if we go on to the other side and make it all the way across, we usually say that the distance from one side of a circle to the other along this middle plane, we usually call this uh, D, or the diameter of a circle. Now the diameter and the radius are very important because they help us find the circumference, which is going to be kind of like the perimeter, but only for a circle, because the circles don't have perimeters. They have circumferences, which is the area around the entire circle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to substitute, instead of perimeter, for this particular subject here, we're just going to go and scratch this out. We're not going to call it perimeter, but instead we're going to call it, sir, circumference. And instead of a shape, we're going to be very specific and we're going to call this around a circle. Okay? And so, the way we find the circumference of a circle, there's two methods. So, circumference is denoted by C, and the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter is one way to do it, or circumference can also be 2 times pi times the radius, or pi times 2 times the radius. Why 2 times the radius? Well, because if you look at D, the diameter up here, if you look at the, the top, I'm going to go back to the top left corner, remember that the radius is only halfway, so the radius is from here to the edge, and we have two of these sections, so if we multiply 2 times the radius, that will be the same thing as the diameter. So these are two different ways that you can represent uh, diameter or the radius in terms of finding the circumference. So let's go ahead and go over some, uh, some examples for each of these uh, figures, just so you can have some practice, and then in the next video we'll cover area, and we'll devote that uh, video to determining the area. So let's go ahead and erase this information that we have here. So let's say we have a square. And I don't know, let's call the, uh, let's say that this side is a 2, and this is a 3, and we're going to say that this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to that side, okay? So essentially, if we do this, then we know that this side is going to be 3, and this side is going to be 2. So if we're trying to find the perimeter of this particular square, we know that the perimeter is equal to the side 1 plus side 2 plus the side 3 plus the side 4. And all we got to do is kind of label these arbitrarily. Let's say we call this one side 1, side 2, side 3, and the top one here is side 4. All we really have to do is substitute. So let's go ahead and substitute here and bring it down. So side 1 would be 3 plus side 2 would be 2 plus side 3 is 3, plus side 4 is 2. 
And just for visual reference, let me just draw some arrows here. So side one goes there. Side two goes there. Side three goes there. And side four would go there. So now all we have to do is go ahead and add all of the sides. And let's just do this in, in sections the way I like to do it. You can add them any way you want, but I usually like to tackle two at a time um, if I can. And so here we go. It's 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 3 and 2 is 5. And then I tackle these two again. 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. So the perimeter of this particular square is going to be 10. Okay, let's go ahead and do a, an example for a rectangle. So let's say we've got this rectangle here. Let's assume that we have all right angles here. Okay, so we know that this side is going to be equal to this side, and this side is equal to the bottom. And just for the sake, let's give this a length of 8. And so that means that, uh, and this one is, uh, let's say, a length of 1. So if we look at the lines here, we know that the left side uh, and the right side our vertical sides are going to be the same, so that will be a 1 there, and then the top and the bottom sides will be the same thing as 8. The perimeter then is going to be P is equal to S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus S4. And if we just, for shorthand sake, let's call this one S1, S2, S3, S4. All we have to do is go ahead and plug in. And so if we take the S1 and plug it in there, take the S2, plug it in there, S3 and plug it in here, and take S4 and plug it in there, we should have the numbers that we need. And let's go ahead and do that now. So we know that P is equal to S1, which is 1, plus S2, which is 8, plus S3, which is 1, plus S4, which is 8. And then bring it down one more time. Take two numbers at a time. So I'm going to take eight and one, uh, eight, 1 and 8, and then plus 1 and 8. If I do that, I get 9 plus 9. And then if I add these two together, 9 plus 9, I'm going to get P is equal to 18. P is the perimeter, so the perimeter of this rectangle is going to be 18. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, how to calculate a perimeter for a triangle. So we, we have a triangle. Let's assume that all the sides are not the same, so we're going to give this as a length of oh, roughly the same. Um, so let's just say 8, 7, and 6, just for the sake of argument. Now it might not be drawn to scale, but let's just assume that these are the lengths. So we know that the perimeter of a triangle is going to be the length of all the sides. So what we need to do here is we need to get S1 plus S2 plus S3. And so if we go through and we label these as S1, S2, S3, so we'll have here S1, S2, and S3. And all you really need to do again is substitute in. So let's say P is equal to S1. In this particular case, S1 is 6. S2 is equal to 7 plus S3, which we've denoted as 8. So when we go in and do this, uh, one of the tricks that I like to use uh, to solve these problems is I usually try to get something that gives me either I, so I add two numbers together or I try to get something that gives me an even number. Since I started off with two numbers, let's just go ahead and do that. So if I take 6 plus 7, I know that 6 plus 7 is going to give me 13. And then I just add the 8, and I bring it down. And now I have two numbers again that I can add. Now, for, the, for those of you who can, can kind of make this a little, can see this could be a little bit difficult, one thing that I want to show you is a little bit of a shorthand. If I take the 13 and assume that 13 is essentially a 10 plus 3, then we can go through and do another kind of math. But essentially what we would be doing is 10 plus 8 would be 18, plus the 2 would be 20, plus, 20, and plus the 1 would give you 21. So 13 plus 8 is equal to 21. And in this particular problem here, the perimeter of this triangle is going to be 21. Now keep in mind that none of the problem examples that I've just done have any units. We're just assigning numbers to the links. Uh, and if we wanted to go a little bit further, we would provide 
feet, meters, inches, so on and so forth. Let's do the last example, the, the circle. So here's the circle. Let's assume then that we've got the center point here and the radius that we'll just say here, radius is equal to 4. And so it's, us to, uh, it's up to us to figure out what the circumference is going to be based on this information. Okay, and so we'll do two. And so let's do the first one. So here, we're not looking for perimeter, but rather we're looking for circumference. So C is equal to, since we have radius, what we want to use is the equation that has radius in it. And recall that the circumference is equal to 2 times the radius times pi. Now, I did not provide the value of pi, but keep in mind that the shorthand for pi is going to be a number that is 3.14. Now, it can be longer, but we're just going to use this number here as a simplified form. So if we do that, all we have to do is substitute, substitute the value of r in this equation here, substitute it for r. Okay, so we now have C is equal to 2 times R, in this particular case, is 4 times pi, which is 3.14. And so let's go ahead and take care of the first two, because this is, this is an easy multiplication problem here. So we'll know now at this point that C is equal to 8 times 3.14. And you can use a calculator to figure this out then. The circumference is equal to... 25.12. And so that will be the circumference of this one here. So in the next lesson, we'll cover area a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, we don't have enough time in this lesson, but we'll do it in the next one. So that was perimeter. And so hopefully if you want to go back and review, you can go ahead and do that. Substitute in your own numbers, but essentially the formulas are the same for, for the various structures that we've uh, identified. Practice on your own. Practice, practice, practice. That's always, always going to ensure that you're going to be in a good spot knowledge-wise to do the problems that are going to be coming up in the Algebra 1 section. So go ahead and subscribe us, and we'll see you in the next video.